All right, well, welcome to lecture one here where we'll be reviewing coordinate systems, spaces, vectors, uh, vector operations, and really just getting a sense of how linear algebra forms the basis of all 3D computer graphics. So 3D graphics are really just a simulation of reality, right? So the first thing we're gonna need to understand is uh, what world or environment this simulation is gonna take place in. So as we study 3D graphics, as with many other mathematical applications, we're going to use Cartesian coordinates, which I'm sure uh, we're all quite familiar with, right? So the Cartesian coordinate system presents a grid of perpendicular lines, right? We know that, at least based on the coordinate systems we've used uh, in, in high school math classes, right, we'll have an x and a y axis here and then a grid of perpendicular lines all right all right so the fact that these grid lines are perpendicular to each other is the key all right and that is what makes linear algebra linear none of these lines are uh, curved or going off in some strange direction uh, everything is straight and perpendicular to each other. So in high school functions and calculus, you'll have used a two-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system, right? So, right, so two-dimensional uh, Cartesian coordinates uh, right here. And building off of that knowledge, well, it's pretty intuitive to go ahead and add a third dimension and uh, get some 3D space here to work with. So let's just draw that out real fast. We can, we can put our X axis down here, maybe our Y axis up here, and then let's add in, let's add in a third dimension and we're gonna call this Z. So we can draw in our perpendicular lines once again and get another linear coordinate system uh, in which our uh, three-dimensional simulation of reality is gonna take place, okay? So uh, nothing fancy going on here. Uh, what we're gonna be using in this course and our study of 3D graphics is nothing more than uh, Cartesian coordinates, 2D Cartesian coordinates with an extra third dimension. All right, now something interesting to note about a 3D coordinate system is that we can take two of the axes. How about the, how about the X and the Z axes? And we can describe a plane, right? Which is this flat surface uh, uh, defined by these two axes that extends infinitely in all directions, but it's flat and it sits on the y-axis precisely where y is equal to zero. So at every point on this plane, y is equal to zero. So that's what we mean when we're talking about, for example, the xz plane. Now, just because uh, the axes of this coordinate system are perpendicular to each other, that doesn't mean that we are guaranteed to always end up with having these axes oriented in the same way, right? For example, uh, we could have, you know, maybe X down here, Y up here, and then our uh, Z axis going like this. Uh, but, you know, just as easily, we could have this coordinate system oriented in a different way, right? Maybe, I don't know, having, having Y down here and uh, X uh, pointing in as, as uh, depth uh, and, and maybe having Z going vertically like this, right? There's many different ways of orienting these axes. So we need a way to determine precisely which orientation we're using, and then we're going to have to stay consistent and stick to that. So this is where the right hand and the left hand rules come in. 
So as the name suggests, we're going to use our hands, uh, kind of in this finger gun shape, uh, as a tactile aid to help us remember a certain orientation of the three axes. So I'll use my uh, lovely drawings here, and uh, we'll, we'll see uh, which direction all the axes point. So in each system, and this is the same for, for both right and left-handed system, in each system, the x-axis uh, points, or the, the positive x-axis points uh, the direction your thumb is pointing. This is the thumb, by the way. I don't know, my, with my drawing, it might be a little bit hard to tell here, right? So the thumb points in the direction of the positive x-axis. The index finger is going to point in the direction of the positive y-axis. And finally, your middle finger kind of sticking out, uh, maybe, maybe into the screen in this case. Uh, this is going to point in the positive z direction. Uh, so, so let's apply those exact same rules to the left hand. Right? So we have uh, our, our thumb pointing in positive x, positive y for the index, and positive z for uh, the middle finger. And so if you hold up your hands, uh, your right and left hands in this particular shape, what you're going to notice is that uh, these two coordinate systems cannot have their axes oriented this, in exactly the same way, right? Even if you line up uh, maybe the positive x and positive y axes on both hands, you're going to notice that the z axis will be pointing in a different direction. So essentially, if we know where two axes should point, and we also know uh, whether it's a right or left-handed system, we can accurately place the third axes and successfully construct the entire coordinate system. All right, now, different software packages use different coordinate systems, uh, depending on what underlying technology they're built on. So software built on OpenGL, right, so OpenGL packages, uh, these are packages like Maya, which of course we'll be using in this course, uh, Blender as well, right, so uh, Maya and Blender, they are built on OpenGL, and OpenGL uh, uses the right-handed, the right-hand rule, we lost our E there, um, uh, OpenGL uses the right-handed system, uh, so we can expect to see the axes in a Maya or a Blender viewport oriented in this uh, uh, orientation. Uh, other packages are built on DirectX. Right, so DirectX. DirectX uses the left-handed system. So software like Unreal and Unity is another example. Uh, Unreal and Unity will give you a viewport with the axes uh, oriented in a different uh, in, in a different way, right? They'll be oriented uh, like this in accordance with the left-handed rule. So before we leave this section, we should quickly discuss coordinate spaces and how there can be multiple coordinate spaces used in a 3D graphics application. So in a universal or a global sense, we could use a Cartesian coordinate system to uh, show where in 3D space individual objects are positioned. Right, so we could have our, uh, our 3D uh, space here, and we could say that, for example, a, a person and this person uh, might be uh, located at exactly this position right here. And, well, of course, that'll be specified by some, some x-coordinate, some y-coordinate, and some z-coordinate. We'll get into that a little bit uh, later when we talk about vectors. But in world space, this object is positioned at a coordinate relative to 
what we call the origin. All right, so here where all these axes cross, that would be the origin, okay? And we are going to call this world space. World space, all right? But there are other coordinate spaces at play as well. The object in our scene, which is this little guy right here, um, th th this person has their own local coordinate space as well. So let's just draw out another set of uh, coordinates here. And uh, this, uh, we're going to call this local space. And that's because uh, basically everything represented in this coordinate system is relative to the object itself, right? So uh, uh, we could say we could say that uh, this coordinate system's origin is uh, well, may maybe it'll be uh, right by the person's feet, and and so their head will be positioned at some uh, p location relative to this origin right here. Their arms will be positioned relative to this origin, uh, their body and their legs, and so on. Right. So in, in world space, we're concerned with the location of an object as a whole. And in local space, uh, we're concerned with the uh, positions of individual components of that object. Now, we'll see other examples of coordinate spaces as well, such as camera space. This is basically another local coordinate space, uh, uh, basically the, the local coordinate space of a camera, which is used to position the contents of an entire scene relative to the, the camera's origin, basically from the location uh, from, from where the camera is viewing, right? Uh, we'll also see screen space, which is a little bit different. Screen space but more on all of these a little bit later on.